Hello and welcome back to round number five of the World Championship, Women World Championship match between uh, current world champion Ju and Jun and runner-up Alexandra Goryachkina. Today we have a new guest here with us and we're very excited to have him, international master from United States, Hans Niemann. Hi Hans, how are you? You're doing well? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, all right. That's that's great. Um, have you been watching the games before this? This one. Yeah. So you missed the best game out of them. Okay. So hopefully today it'll be another decisive game because that was quite exciting. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, should we go directly into the game as we started a bit later than what we normally do? We can see what's been happening. Yeah. Chessboard here, and I mean Hans, I think most of, I mean, most, I think most of people here on chess.com know who you are, so perhaps you don't need <laughs> a big introduction here. Yeah, let's go through the beginning here. I think that some people are saying that they can't hear you. Yeah, some people are saying it here in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can see you smiling about it right now, realizing that they can't hear you. So that's... They can see that bit. <laughs> okay, so he's telling me to say what what he's saying, so that I <laughs> repeat everything. Yeah, C four. <clears throat> yeah, Knight F six. Sorry, Knight C three, E six, E four. Yeah. Wait, sorry. Let's see. <sighs> yeah, they're telling me to unplug the headphones. So before we get into before before you tell us everything, perhaps it's good if we just make sure that they can hear you. Um All right. So, I'm going to unplug them. Oh. All right, let's see. Is this better? Hello? Hello? Can you chat hear me? Yeah, but now my headphones aren't working. <laughs> 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 Perfect. <laughs> anyway, Perfect. people There's can no hear problem. Now. Everything good? Yeah, all right. Okay, so now I'm... I have a voice. No, you're so um, here, uh, after the move knight c3, um, kind of give, forcing a, a block to make a choice, um, uh, Some it is kind of like a, an anti-Grunfeld system, um, because if they played uh, g6 instead of e6, then uh, e4 would be played, and you can transpose into a, uh, a king's Indian. And there's also, you know, transpositions with this e4 move, um, and you can, you know, get some very interesting games where, you know, there's a, this imbalance in the uh, the center. So I think that maybe Drew and June, uh, after, you know, a win, wants to, you know, keep keep the pressure. Yeah. But uh, she played E6 instead here. Yeah, E6. E6, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So uh, E6, D5. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and you said that this was a really forcing line before, yeah? After E6. Yeah, so after D5, things get very forcing um, because there's this, uh, you know, tension in the center that is, uh, you know, broken down. So generally there's going to be some, you know, dynamic uh, imbalances that result in some, you know, uh, interesting complications. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah. So yeah, C, C takes D5, E takes D5, E5. Hmm. Knight E4. Yeah, so um, here I think there's a few moves that I'm aware of. I think D4 is a move and D3 is a move. And then Knight F3 is even a move. And I think there's those are the three main moves here. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, you're either going to kick out the knight and provoke the trade of knight takes cd, pawn takes c3, um, or maybe you, you can just, you know, not keep the, the movement of the, the d-pawn flexible yeah. and, you know, des decide. Because if, if you don't move the d-pawn, then you kind of keep your opponent guessing. So that's kind of a, you know, a recurring, uh, a re a repeating, you know, opening concept of, you know, keeping, you know, flexibility with your, your center pawns. Yeah, and leave them guessing where the deep pawn on the deep pawn is going. Mm -hmm. is yeah. Someone said as well that now after she played knight f three, is then knight d five a threat? Knight takes d five to play then knight a uh, queen a four check. You mean knight takes e four? No, knight takes d five. I mean after knight f three, which was what uh, Goryachkina played, mm -hmm. is then a yeah. threat of white to play knight takes d five. Knight takes d five. I think it hangs a piece. Queen takes d5. Yeah, but queen... Oh, yeah, of course. The queen is protecting the knight. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So for the person who said this in the chat, now you know. <laughs> but actually, in the in yeah. the, the idea, I think that they're mentioning is a uh, knight takes e4, pawn takes e4. Oh, yeah, knight takes e4. Sorry, 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 sorry. I just read it wrong. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought you meant. Um, yeah, sorry. Sorry, you're absolutely right. It's a bit early mm -hmm. here. So uh, in that... <laughs> Yeah, in that line, um, I think that um, you're just up a pawn, but yeah. um, the e5 pawn is, is advanced, so there's some there's a big uh, you know outpost on d5, so yeah. it's you know there's some some weak positional weaknesses, and there's a lot of uh, compensation that uh, black would have in that type of position. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, have you ever played three? this pawns? I, I have not played uh, this line for actually either sides actually, but I'm I'm familiar with this line just from seeing a lot of the the top players uh, play. So it's a common line among uh, top players. Yeah, for, uh, yeah. All right, knight f three, bishop f five. Mm -hmm. This seems to be a bit of a a novelty. Maybe I'm not sure what um you know how many games on this line, but um. Uh, delaying the castle, like bishop e7, seems natural. Um, and castling the king, bishop f5, also you know leaves ideas like queen b3 uh, as a possibility attacking the d5 and b7 pawn, and then also you know not delaying castling might have some you know if you if you delay casting for too long and white gets uh, some activity, then you might regret that you didn't you know develop your pieces and, and castle early. But I, I think this is uh, some some preparation for sure. But um, but after, for instance, bishop e seven, as you said, mm -hmm. is then is then the main move to take on e four and play queen a four and go for the pawn, or what is it that white typically? Yeah. Here? So the thing about that position is that um, I feel like sacrificing the pawn may not be that bad. Um, I feel like there might be some theoretical line, but um, obviously you can't. I can't say too much without actually studying the line myself, but um, I think that, you know, black should have some decent compensation there. But I'm, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, White also likes sweet. a bit of development, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe knight c6 is an idea to stop this queen a4 check. Um, but then you've kind of committed to knight c6 and you don't, you want to put the pawn on c5. Um, you know, generally you want to put the, the pawns in front of the knights um, when you in the in the center. Um, so then you can't really play c5. So it's, it's harder to challenge uh, white center 
Yeah. So just give it five. You know, it seems like a risky move, but um, you know, let's see how it turns out. So uh, D three was next. Hmm. Knight takes C three. Pawn takes C three. C five. C five. Yeah. So now the pawn is yes. getting to C five, as you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you know, black can uh, take a lot more space in the center. So um, yeah, D four, pretty logical. Um, queen a five, bishop d two, and c six. So yeah, before we started up the stream, uh, I was looking at this position. I was just curious, you know, what what do you think about this position? There's a, there's a lot of interesting ideas here. So what do you what do you think might the options might be here? Uh, you're asking me, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not, okay, because I'm not know, sure I mean, that Queen B3 is a move that gets into mind, but I'm not sure if you want to develop the white squared bishop before. Mm -hmm. Do you any of that? Yeah. I think that um yeah, Queen B3 is interesting. Yeah. Attacking the B7 and, and D5 pawn. I'm, I'm not sure what what they could play there. Um it's tough to find a move. Yeah, that's Maybe what I'm wondering. Where 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 it's where the pieces, where Black's pieces are going now. Uh, yeah. Is it Long Castle so maybe, that Black wants to play here? Mm -hmm, yeah, that, that actually might be, you know, the surprise that was prepared. Um, lo uh, long Castles and a very interesting, I guess, positional threat here um, would, would be to play C4. And I think the, I guess the, the reason why it's a, a positional threat is that if the queen moves back, you know, let's say to, to b2, but actually get trapped by bishop to a3. Very nice. And then if the queen goes back to, to d1, I'm what I'm afraid of. Move and show it. Yeah. And then if, if, if the bishop comes to a3, the threat is to go to b2. And there's also, it's kind of, it's very hard for, for white to find a, you know, a plan because this bishop on f5 is a very nice diagonal. The bishop on e2 is, is is closed out by the d5 yeah. and c4 pawns. So I think Castle's queen side might have been, you know, a very interesting preparation. And I and, and I think that if, if white can't stop the move uh, c4, hmm. then black will get this, you know, nice uh, positional bind on the position. Uh, so I think that that might have been what uh, uh, Goryachkina was was afraid of. Can white play c4 here? Yeah, so uh, after Castle's Queen side or, or C4 uh, immediately? No, after Castle's Queen side. Mm -hmm. I think that if you're going to, with um, then maybe uh, Queen to B6, um, maybe even, you know, Knight B4, it's a possibility, but I think Queen B6. And then after um, Queen B6, um, uh, you know, it might be. I'm not sure. Let's say C takes D5, uh, Queen takes B3, A takes B3, Rook takes D5. Um, in that position, um, Bishop C4 looks like a possibility. Uh, Rook D7 or Rook D8. Probably want to go Rook uh, D7 to protect the F7 pawn. Yeah. Uh, so Bishop, this is, that, this is probably a line that I think that she's calculated uh Maybe after Rick D seven D five comes to mind. Yeah, D five looks really really strong. So because I'm worried the A7 about that pawn move. Is hanging. Mm hmm. Yeah. So a move that actually comes to mind. Um, yeah, it seems actually very very hard. Uh, you know, in this position it would be it would not be great. Um, so I'm not. But maybe the idea. I don't, maybe there was an exchange sacrifice with Rook takes d4 instead of Rook d7, but this line looks uh, pretty good for white. Yeah. So maybe if you go, if you go back to the position after um, c4, might have to try and find a better move um, for, for black there. But yeah. the queen is a uh, sort of out of, out of good squares. Yeah. Of course, this is not what happened in the game and this is far from the game, but we're just analyzing what, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, what would have happened here if White played Queen B three? Mm -hmm. So yeah, position. after in the game C four is played, so directly, directly challenging the center. Yeah. So uh, I think that uh, when I was looking before, 
it's important to know that knight b4 actually loses on the spot to a3. And uh, you can't go uh, knight c2. So that's kind of an, uh, not really an option. But I think this is really, really interesting position. And I feel like uh, Gretschkina is going right into Juan Juan's pl uh, plan. And, you know, it could get really, really crazy really, really quickly. Um, yeah. So queen d8, protecting it. And queen b3, kind of this is this big standoff in the center. And, um, you know, I feel like it's going to be deciding on whoever can complete development and start attacking um, because if, if, if white was developed here, then obviously, you know, black's position is, is not too solid. So it kind of depends on, on those things. Yeah. So now we can see that, um, the position here looks similarly to the one that we we're analyzing before, but then, uh, black had played long castle. If mm -hmm. white would have played queen B3 immediately to protect the D5 and B7 pawn probably. Yeah, this is definitely a lot more challenging to uh, the black center. And there's just a lot of tension, but it's important that, um, you know, if, if if either side can establish control, mainly white, if white can get uh, establish a very strong center, uh, then I think it's, it's just going to be game over. But it depends on um, how the, the tension is resolved. So Bishop B4, a very strong move, kind of has a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of ideas, and I think this is still preparation. Hmm. Actually, if you look at the, the clocks, um, yeah, June June has an hour and a half, and Gretchkina has uh, an hour left. So I think there's, I think she's definitely still in preparation. And I think that's going to be you know a big advantage. Such a complicated position to still be in preparation and have sort of like a, a feeling of of what type of ideas are going to be you know good. Yeah, and psychologically as well. I mean, Gretchkina just lost the game. And then the game mm -hmm. after she's getting, she's not as prepared perhaps as Ju and June is for this position. Yeah, no, it's definitely very scary when your opponent blitzes out a bunch of moves yeah. and you're just sitting there for a very long time trying to figure out what's going on. So it's very, it's a, it's a you know, like a psychological hurdle to overcome. Yeah. And it's very easy to just go into the tank and, you know, spend like a half an hour on a move. And then that might have some, some long-term effects on the game. Yeah, so definitely. Queen takes b7 is played, no restraint. Yeah, so very interesting, forward. very interesting this. So rook c8, and then Bishop I think that I was thinking, so you, you might have the, the next move. Yeah, why play bishop g5 here? Bishop g5, interesting. So very cool. aggressive. Wow. Wow, this is a uh, this is this is very 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 crazy. Hans, you came for a good game, I think. I did. I came for this is the this is a good good day to good day to come. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So so many so many things are just are coming to mind right now. Yeah, I oh, mean, what really? happens, for instance, if you just if if Black just plays a a move like Queen Queen D seven? I don't know, just something calm here. Yeah, so I think that's definitely the first thing to consider. What if you just trade the queens? And you just say, okay, I'm down a pawn, but the center is very unstable. And basically saying, okay, I'm going to win the pawn back because of how unstable your pieces are and how my pieces coordinate. So you could say that. And the bishop um, here on e4 is very strong as well. Yes, bishop is very strong. So um, someone in the chat actually said um, Tomaszewski played knight g5 instead of bishop g5. Hmm. So I guess we're we're in some some sort of theory. So it's still theory. Interesting. So I think that um, Ju and June is going to have a, a big edge here if she is you know if she's prepared and, and, and has seen that that Tomaszewski game. So we're definitely still in I guess explored waters and things haven't gone. No, I guess, I don't know how many games are in this position, but there's no, like, you know, really big novelties that haven't been played yet. Hmm. But, um, and another move that I think is really interesting is, is queen a5 check. Sorry, after bishop g5? Yeah, queen a5 check in your, in your court, in your, you're kind of saying, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a draw for, 
If I think that, that this might be, goes back to D2, you mean? If bishop goes back to D2 and the queen goes to D, it's a, it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a, it's one of those sly, it's like a, it's like a psychological thing. Like, do you want to take the draw or do you want to, you want to play on? This is a very interesting move, you know, giving, I guess, like the option to draw. But I think that in this position, I think that, um, Gretchkina is in sort of, it's not, not that great of a sign that the best here is just, you know, kind of this draw offer. Um, so it's kind of worrying. Um, maybe that's like a psychological thing. She's like, okay, I've been caught in the opening. Let's just, let's just make a draw. So yeah. I think that, you know, maybe um, uh, Drew and June will, will try and, you know, you know, not, not accept the draw. And your, your move, that, the move that you suggested, um, Queen D7 is very interesting, but maybe maybe you can try and think of something else. Yeah. Um, Do you think that Goryachkina would play here Bishop D2? I mean, for instance, what happens if something like, like of course, but if Knight D2, then the D4 pawn is hanging, yeah? Mm, yeah. That's so the, in this position, there's a lot of hanging pieces. The first move that comes to mind that seems to be really, really strong is uh, just simply moving the Bishop back to F5. And um, the Bishop in F5... You, you defend the rook, you, um, you know, this bishop is yeah. safe, and then, you know, I have no idea how knight takes d4 is going to be stopped. Yeah. And then after knight takes d4, knight c2, how are you going to stop that? So bishop f5 seems like a really strong move here. Definitely. I'm not sure how that's going to be countered, but, you know, a, a possibility could even be, let's say, c takes d5. You get some really, really inter interesting position. Like, let's say c takes d5. Hmm. Knight takes d4, and right, you can just say two. okay. Hmm. But the, but the, but the really interesting thing is here. I think you could uh, a move that just seems you know that could be a big surprise. What just what if you just play rook c1 and after, ask like um, how to proceed here? Just just after knight d takes d4, just rook c1, and just say okay. You know I have my the the pawn on d5 and pawn on e5, very very strong center pawns. And if you're not winning on the spot, strategically, you know, it's game over. And what about if Black once again goes for something? I mean, I was going to ask, what if Black simply plays something like Rook C7 here? Just I think Rook C7, nice just, what happens, if you just, I think you just move back, maybe. To Queen B2? Move back. Yeah, and then everything, everything is protected. And everything is fine for, for White here, yeah. So I think that this might be knight takes d4 looks so strong and this this idea looks very appealing. But when you start to look deeper, you, you might realize that knight takes d4 rook c1 and you've run out of uh, you've run out of you know firepower to, to to support the attack. So I think this is a tough. I, I, unfortunately, this might just go to a, a draw. And what about um, something like what about something like? Uh... No, it's probably not possible. I was going to say something like C4, trying simply to get out the, the black squared bishop, but probably to just take, and then then there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's... Yeah. Knight so, C4, I think, I, think, I think you can take that. Yeah, with the rook, perhaps, even. Yeah, the rook or the bishop. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, so... Um, I think it's very, but knight d2, I think might, might have to try and find a move against knight d2 because, you know, it's actually looking very strong. Yeah. Now that I, I think about it a bit more because you can't really uh, fix this hanging rook. There's not, there's not really a great way to defend it. So a question, Hans. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, but yep. the problem is that, yeah, of course. No, because the problem is that bishop g5 comes immediately, so you have to move the queen. I mean, I wanted to take on f3, but obviously that's not possible because the queen is threatened. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so has any move been played? Bishop e7 was played here. Okay, bishop e7 was played. Interesting. Yeah. So no queen bishop move. E7. Yeah, so no queen move. So I guess... And it was played, the thing is that it was played within maybe f at least four minutes was taken. So I think that 
Uh, this was a surprise for sure. I think this was surprise. maybe she was looking at this knight g5 idea that was played in the other game. Maybe, maybe, but uh, this is still very hard for white to play because everything is so imbalanced, it's all going to collapse. So let's just say, like, bishop takes e7, knight yeah. takes e7. That's what was played. Bishop takes e7 was played. Yeah, that's forced. And then yeah. if you play a simple move like bishop b2, e takes d4, it looks, c takes d4 is looking very strong. And it's just, you may be up a pawn, but everything is just going to be taken. And white's pieces are pretty bad. And this queen is lined up with this bishop. So I'd, I'd be very scared if I was white here. Um, do we have a move after knight takes e7? No, we don't have a move after knight uh, after bishop takes e7. Oh. But oh, just bishop takes. Oh, this is actually very interesting. Yeah, I missed. And chat, they brought up uh, the idea, uh, intermediate move, the queen a5 check as an intermediate move, maybe. Maybe this in, is in what, what position? After bishop takes e7 instead of knight takes e7. Oh, what if you queen throw a5 in check. queen a5 check as in a in, in, in remezzo? Yeah, that's that's very interesting here. Is the knight d two the move that? that uh, knight d two is forced, yeah. I think. Knight takes on e seven, and now this may be even a better version of the other position. Yeah, I think it's just an amazing version of the other position, and uh, it's worrying. But I think you can bail out here with um, queen b five check. And I think that it might, things might be liquidating a bit too soon. But what happens if, if for instance, C4 here? Wouldn't, couldn't this be dangerous for white? Queen... After takes, takes, and C4. But if, I think if C4, knight takes E4... Oh, the knight, the bishop is hanging, of course, yeah. Knight yeah. takes, pawn takes. Even here is pretty interesting, but uh, my fear is that after rook C1, C3... Um, the, the e4 pawn will probably be picked up, and I don't, I don't think that the, the c3 pawn will be, be strong enough to hmm. to make up for the, the, the lack of material. Yeah. So, yeah, I think queen b5, I would be... So what, what was played in the, the game? It was... Knight takes knight b7 takes, was played. Yeah, I think that was a correct decision. Yeah. Um, I, I think that liquidating a bit too early would be a mistake. Um, but I, I think that the another move. I think that all that all that whites want, all that white white wants, is just to trade the queens. I think if you can trade off the queens without giving up too much, it's a big, uh, big accomplishment. Yeah. Um, so a move, maybe queen b five check, um, trying to provoke the move queen d seven and trading off the queens could be a possibility. Um, maybe. Yeah. You know, knight c6. Ooh, I guess there's a two options: knight c6 and queen d7. Um, do you think that maybe G1 should take the risk and play knight c6 and try and keep things more interesting, or do you think that you know, considering that she has the lead in the match, maybe it's you know the smart decision with she has the black pieces just to you know play the solid line, secure the draw, you know, make sure there's no risk, and you know, you know, maintain the lead of the match. It's kind of a so what do you what do you think of that uh, dilemma? Well, I mean, to be honest, I think that right now Goryachkina is more vulnerable than what she would be that when she, what she will be in a couple games. So I feel like what Goryachkina would want is to make a couple draws, not lose any more game, and then really be fully into into the match again. I mean, psychologically, she might be she might be better in a couple games than what she is right now. I mean, of course, I don't know her situation, but it's very typical after you lose a game to perhaps want a little bit too much the game after. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that the best version of Goryachkina would be if she had a couple games to recover, unless she's fully recovered. But normally, I think it takes some time and then uh, and then play her best. I think she's a bit more vulnerable now than what she will be in a couple games. Yeah, and I think it's also would be you should consider that the match I think I believe takes place 
is split between Russia and China, right? Yeah, so now right a, now they're playing in Shanghai. Well, maybe, you know, I maybe there's some, some some home court advantage, but I feel like a big reset of the match where the players kind of take some time and step back is when it switches to Russia. So, yeah. you know, maybe if Goryachkin can stay in there and then when it changes to playing in Russia, the kind of home court advantage and kind of like a reset could, you know, help reprogram and, and, and um, you know, reestablish yeah. her, you know, her best form. And that could, you know, be, be a game changer in this match. Definitely. So I think I think that she's a bit more vulnerable now than what she will be, as you said, when, when they're starting to play in Russia in a couple games. Mm. So uh, they have two more games here in, in, in Shanghai, round five and six. So uh, after that, they will change. Let's mm -hmm. see, have I they played any moves? A... Queen b5 was played, Hans. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now so, uh... as you said, the question is queen d7 or knight c6. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a um, tough choice. Should we look at both moves? Should we start with knight c6? Yeah we, can, yeah, we can start with knight c6. Um, so knight c6 is, I think, uh, directly challenging the center. Yeah. Um, once you castle, knight takes d4 would be a big threat. The d4 pawn is very weak because the bishop um, on e4 can remove the knight you know, whenever it wants. So that's that's a, a possibility, um, but it, maybe obviously you can consider queen takes c five. You know why not just take another pawn and yeah. then you hope that you, you don't lose. It's maybe it's a a risk, but it's, it's a few things. Queen takes c five. I think the best part about that move it's the most important part is it, it's, it's stopping you know block from castling. Precisely. Right? Mm -hmm. And question is so if think, there are any good moves for black here. Mm -hmm. Well, can you take on that, can you take on e five? Yeah, knight takes e five. I think would the response would be queen b five check. Go then, back. yeah, knight takes e five, queen b five. Um, knight c six. Uh, then yeah, knight c six. Um, then you know, pawn takes d five, and in that position, I'm even tempted to play. A move like just castles, yeah, and this just say strong. okay, you can take my piece. But if you take the piece, bishop takes c six. Uh, queen b two doesn't mm, doesn't look like there's enough. Unfortunately, it's it very. Looks good, it's but very, perhaps there isn't enough. Probably sure. isn't enough. There might. It's very, very complicated. I don't think that it would, it would be a good idea to take this risk. Um, but I think there's definitely some big compensation here. Maybe Queen A5 check. But definitely something that I think might take up some time for Gorgachkina to calculate. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not so sure that this will happen. I think the more logical move would just to be to play Bishop takes D5. But I feel like that just liquidates into a very uh, drawn position. So if we go back um, to queen e5, knight c6, queen takes e5, knight takes e5, queen b5, knight c6. Yeah. And then uh, pawn takes d5, bishop takes d5. It's hard to find a move here. It's hard to find a move. So I suppose I suppose that White simply wants to castle as soon as possible here as well. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any complications? So I, so I think maybe just Bishop E two, and I, uh, my fear is that it's going to liquidate into some very very boring end game. Um, Something like this. Castle, yeah. Castle. I think that just Bishop. Yeah, Bishop takes F three, Knight takes D four. And, you know, I think that might just liquidate into a draw. Um, might have to look a bit closer to try and find something that'll complicate the game more. So. Yeah. I think that this line is, 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 is just going to be a draw. Uh, after a knight takes d4, queen d5. 
anything that defends the uh, bishop with the queen should be a pretty simple draw. Like queen d5, for instance, here? Yeah, queen d5, queen h5. Uh, there's just not enough, uh, you know, left to play with, unfortunately. Yeah, but okay, I mean, of course, this was not, they would, this would not be a bad result for Jew and Jew, either. No, would not. With, with the black no. pieces, I think any player would, would take a draw with the black pieces. And then match. she can and then she can try to push a bit more tomorrow, perhaps, Jew and Jew. If she wants. Mm -hmm. The question yeah. is what Goryachkina should do. Yeah. So um, I guess instead of knight c6, might have to look at the move um queen d7, the one that you suggested earlier. I think that maybe trading those the queens might put more pressure um on Goryachkina. Hmm. So maybe Kate? Or does Goryachkina want to move the queen somewhere? I don't, maybe. But it I'm looks quite sure. dangerous to do that. Yeah, I think that um I think the queen has to stay where it is. Oh, you want to but, keep it here on b five? Yeah, I think the queen has if the queen yeah, I think the queen has to stay on b five. Um but Maybe pawn takes d5, knight takes d5, and there's definitely some compensation, but the annoying thing is that you just, you can't castle. You want to just castle, but, you know, a move like rook c1 in this position could be very annoying. Um, rook yeah. c1 might undermine. It's kind of, kind of in zugzwang almost in this position. Yeah, you really want to castle here. But even yeah, if you take on B, even if you take on b five, I mean, why takes with the check? So you still yes, have the castling right. problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's no real way to to really take control. So after c takes d five, might need to look at some more you know direct ways. You might have to play um, pawn takes d four. But the risk of that is that um, d6 might happen, yeah. and then those those pawns are very very strong. Yeah. So you're basically really relying on being able to break down that pawn structure because if you take the e pawn, the d pawn will probably fall. But if if, if white develops and controls the position, then it's going to be really really bad. Yeah, definitely. Then it's. I mean, this protected pawn on d6 would be horrible to have. For black to have to keep in the game, mm -hmm. but um, of yeah, course the knight on f three is also a bit threatened. Mm -hmm. so. so definitely tough, very tough. Yeah, Pontics I'm wondering, could you take on f three here? My okay, worry okay. is that um, like, there, there's gonna be some bishop h three check ideas. I'm very worried about. Oh yeah, that's a very good worry to have. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I mean, this pawns so, look very dangerous. I don't know. Yeah, it's. I think that um. Hmm. Try. It's. It's hard. Uh, oh well, maybe, maybe. I think that a move that actually we might have, you know, not considered that maybe the move that keeps the pressure going is is rook c6 as as weird as that looks you might it might be what keeps the 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 attack alive or the yeah. the, the pressure alive because yeah. after rook c6 um this this rook c1 idea and you can you can castle immediately that's the biggest point you can castle you know right away so Finally, no, um, the black king can castle. You can, if you castle, yeah. then there's this, you can, you're definitely going to be able to, to, to get a lot of play. So rook c6, a move that comes to mind is e6. Pitching, giving away the pawn, but I think you have bishop takes f3 there. So, so it's definitely after, very, very... Sorry, after rook c6, instead of rook c1, e6, you're saying? No, after, yeah, after rook c6, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, the Wixie one idea is, is, is not as strong. It's probably just a waste of a tempo. And yeah. if you can castle and then start to think about moves like bishop takes f3 and then followed by pawn takes d4 or, you know, Rick b6 ideas and just try to break down the white position before they can castle. This rook on the... c6 is quite strong now. I mean, if it can go to b6, I mean, of mm -hmm. course, the c5 pawn is hanging, but if at some point it can go to b6, it can activate yeah. itself quite quickly, and perhaps then black can also double on the b file. And, and another very, very interesting thing is, does rook to c6 can come to g6 and, and prevent bishop e2? Yeah. By attacking the g2 pawn, then we have a, a rook. Do you have a rook lift emote in chat? Anyone, if there's not seen emote, you should make that emote, rook lift. <laughs> very, very interesting idea. Very nice. I mean, this rook that looks so weird there, it's, it could become very, very strong in the yes. game. I think that this rook g6 idea, and then maybe like a like a queen a8, and then there's you got this pressure on the g2 pawn. I think you get some really interesting dynamics. And where is the like, white hey, king going? That's the question. Let's say castles, castles, some a3, rook g6, castles, queen a8. And this, this, this diagonal is looking very, very scary. I think that this is like, this is interesting. Uh, it's very, very interesting. F5's coming, you know, this is going to be some very, you know, maybe you make it a puzzle rush coming up. You make it a puzzle rush. <laughs> I actually, re I really like this rook c6 idea. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because as he said, it keeps the pressure. That's the important thing. It keeps the pressure and, mm -hmm. uh, and allows castle. For black, which is yeah. very important. But I think that a rook six is kind of an easy move to to not to like throw away because that was the third move we considered. It wasn't uh, that instinctual to think of that move. No. Kind of because it's a uh, you don't really want to put the rook. There's a lot of pin ideas, but in this position you have the ability to to, to go into this pin because you have you know this uh, unique. Position. I think rook c6 would be a move that surprises Goreshkina, and maybe hmm. that she misses. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's the that's danger cool. with, with, with moves like this. That they're moves that you don't really consider sometimes in positions. Mm -hmm. You just overlook yeah, I think them. Mm -hmm. And the, these, are the, these are some of the best players in the world. So I think where, you, where really the difference is really made is these you know moves like rook, rook c6 that are underestimated. And then rook g6 happens, and you're, you're, it's everything just comes together. Yeah. Should we see what what should white play here? I mean, is there anything else? What about e6 immediately with the idea of playing knight e5? Is that a move to consider? Yeah, so I think e6, um, the problem with e6 is probably bishop takes f3. Yeah. And, um, and there's no the danger for, for black uh, on if white takes on f7, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can just take so back. In chat, uh, Mr. Sabin yeah. asked, what if black plays king f8 after queen b5? Let's look into so that. This is a fourth possibility that maybe we, we should consider. Um, king f8 here. Yeah, king f8 after queen b5 check. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean... Um, I think that, yeah. yeah. No, you can. <laughs> Do you want to go first? No, you, you can go. No, I mean, I was just going to say that um, as, as, as rook c6, it does keep the pressure still, but I like this idea of getting the rook into play and also being able to castle quickly. Mm -hmm. So if there is yeah. no problem with rook c6, I would much prefer that move than king f8. That's Yeah, and I think that uh, you just want to make sure you're developing all your pieces very quickly. Um, so I think that, uh, that's going to be, it's all about the initiative that, um, that, uh, that white black has and it's the initiative that will, you know, be the deciding factor in this game. So I guess there's a, uh, I, no moves have been played after queen b5. No, no moves have been played yet. I mean, of course we've wow. now looked at four possibilities. So there are many things to consider in this position for you and Jim. Yeah. Definitely very, very interesting position. I think there's going to be a lot of calculation here. And I think that's why uh, Jun Jun's thinking um, there's, I guess, three viable options. Knight c6, queen d7, rook c6 are the main moves. 
I think that King F8 is probably going to be dismissed pretty quickly. Um, but maybe, I think maybe, actually, we might have not given enough thought to the position after knight uh, c6, queen takes c5. I just have this feeling there, this, this, uh, this, 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 there has, there, I feel like there has to be some, you know, beautiful discovery that wins the game. Or maybe that's just me hoping for something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe there's something. So maybe, do you think that maybe we should, you know, consider some, some other possibilities? You know, there might be some, some, some breakthrough that we're not considering. No, of course. Um, of course. <clears throat> so let's see. <clears throat> How about after, um, I think that's really important in these really complicated positions where you're thinking and there's all these possibilities to really go through all the possibilities. So I think a possibility we might have uh, you know, ignored was after knight takes e5, queen b5 check, knight d7 may be a possibility. Um, maybe this is an idea that we might have underestimated. Could black, could white play knight e5 then? Yeah, that's what maybe knight e5. And then you're just going to trade off all the pieces. Oh, well, I think I think we might have found some, some very interesting idea here. If castles, then... Mm, if queen takes d7, there's queen a5 check. But even here, might not be enough, but maybe king e2, queen c3. And it's an interesting position. Yeah. You're down a piece, but you have a lot of compensation. No, yeah, of course. I mean, this rook is also coming into the b file. If, and if let's what? say... Mm -hmm. If like rook d1, a move that looks really scary is rook b8. Yeah, precisely. Getting, activating this rook and getting it into the attack here. And, and I think a nice uh, move here would be if you go... Can you play rook, rook d2, d2 here? Maybe you just play rook b2. Rook takes b2, queen takes b2. And then um, let's say the king goes to e1. Oh no, there's a mate on c1, of course. Well, no. not mate, but oh no, it's not a mate, of course. But yeah. So I think that if if the king goes to e3, yeah. Then if queen c3 check, yeah. Can you then act? Oh, but there is an f. Seven pawn hanging. I wanted to play rook b8 again, but oh yeah, an F7 yeah. The interesting. Oh wait, oh any. I think you've you've stumbled upon the. Uh, I think you found the winning idea. Queen c1 after king e3, king e2, rook b8, queen takes f7 and just hide the king away on on h8 and say okay. My king is safe. I'm gonna checkmate you. So giving up the pawn. And giving up all these pieces, and now you've got this like checkmate threat. And what's 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 white gonna do? Doesn't this looks very look very nice here? It's 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 very nice. This is a very very nice line. Yeah. So I, I think that sacrificing all pieces. For, yeah, I think yeah. Juan Jun is calculating something along these lines, but of course, you know. I neglected to mention that knight takes d7 is a possibility, you know, but this was what an about interesting knight line. D3 here? What about knight d3 here? Someone's asking that in the chat. If, of course, it looks very dangerous. Yeah, I think that you can play knight d3. Bishop takes d3, I think. Can you take, take, on, take on c4? I think you can just take with the, the pawn on c4 yeah. and play c3. And just push that pawn because you can't move you can never move the bishop because of the uh the rook hanging so play pawn take c3 and just play c3 yeah oh queen takes c4 queen d1 check oh boy this is this is crazy <laughs> very crazy yeah this is very crazy 
I'm not sure what to say. How about queen takes? Well, I don't know. I have no. Wow. Yeah, but the problem after pawn takes c4 is this queen takes c4. The queen comes back, unfortunately. Yeah. And what about... Um, yeah, and of course, black also needs to be careful about the eighth rank here. Yeah, I don't think there's enough, unfortunately. I don't think there's enough here. So this knight d3 perhaps was... Knight d3 difficult. idea. Maybe let's go back to knight d3 and try and find a better move. Can you... Oh, no, of course, you cannot play that there. So it takes... And now knight d3 here. This is the position. Okay, knight d3. Sorry, what happens after queen c2 check? Then king e3. Then let then pawn... Mm. This is it's tricky. Chad is very tough. Well, the first thing that should be pointed out is you have a draw. Rook b2 is a draw. You can first you can establish that. If you play Sacrifice rook b2 queen. after knight d3. Yeah, rook b2 is a draw. So I think that in this line, if you don't have something, it's okay, but rook b2 is, is a draw. You have a perpetual there. So there's this there's always a bailout. You want to make sure that when you sacrifice pieces, it's very common for there to be like a bailout perpetual. So at least when you're going down this line, you see that you, that you have this 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 bell out line. Yeah, that's very comforting. In yeah, so you can yeah. sacrifice all your pieces and at the end, draw. Yeah, all right, it didn't work out, but let's, let's take a draw here then. Yeah. So. But but this queen c two, what what happens then? Is it king e three? King e three. And I'd like to play. What about oh, here? Wait. Bishop g6. Bishop g6. To play rook e8. He takes d5, maybe. I think the knight's going to come to e5. Oh, is the knight coming back? Yeah. That's oh, not... well, wait. If queen takes d5. Yeah. Oh, but couldn't we play? Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Yeah, I think they. I think they're uh, gonna run out of pieces. Yeah. Rookie eight ninety five. Yeah. That's Even the king of some. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's enough, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah, but we have to go back and queen takes d seven is enforced. I think there's knight takes d seven, and then the move maybe rookie eight. To go back all the way back to queen takes d7. Yeah, and here rook I'm e8. Not, I'm not sure. I think that, yeah, knight takes d7. Yeah. Rook e8. Then bishop e2, I guess. Looks natural. No, bishop e2, bishop takes g2. What am I? That's a blunder. Um. Yeah, but that's, I mean, if bishop e2 doesn't work, because that's what looks more natural, or what why would want to play in this position? Rook, rook g1 looks, but, but I think you might have to go knight e5 here. Can you play f6 then? Yeah, I think f6 is a possibility. Then you're winning the knight back. Yeah, this is... But then f3. Well, wow. then, oh, but um, there's a check here on d5, yeah. Maybe. Oh, Pontex e5, Pontex e4, queen h4 check. That's it. I think. I think that's it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Of course, you cannot play g3, but yeah. you Pont should move with the king, maybe. It's like king d1. Yeah. Because if if king e2, then rook f8 could come, yeah? Perhaps. Yeah. Just, these are these are such tempting lines, but there's just not enough. There's not enough. 
I can give you. I think Queen F two is very strong. And then uh, Queen takes D four maybe, but I think that it's uh, better to play King D one and avoid uh, this this Queen F two check idea. To play immediately, yes. No, I'm at a loss for words. This is very, very complicated. Let's say like a very subtle move, like Rook E D A. <laughs> Just a very, very subtle move. But what if you take? Oh, okay. Then the idea like, is that if you take with the E pawn before he's hanging, re relaxed move, like a. Yeah. Of course, I mean, you're threatening to take. Are you threatening to take on this, E4? I would love this on the board. This would be a dream come true. <laughs> I want this. I want I want to see some. I think that here, I think black is very, very good position here. Because it, the, the, the center is just going to break open. <laughs> and it, it's very, very nice, actually. Because if you play um, uh, C takes D5, then Queen takes E4. If D takes E5, like D takes E4. If, if white like commits to the center on one side, then there's just going to be this like very, very strong like um, this break. So I would love to see this. If I could, this would this would make it very, very fun to watch. But I think that I think that you know, I think that it would be great if she went for this. I do not think she's going to go for this. Yeah. I highly doubt it. Yeah. But I can still hope. Do you think that she would go for this if it wasn't the World Championship match? I think that it would be. I think so. I'm not too familiar with her playing style, but this idea is very, 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 like, yeah. it's going for it. And I think that that might be what she's calculating. Um, Someone you know, is I, asking. I, I think, yeah. But obviously in these, where you're stacking a piece, we have to be very, very, um, you know, careful and very, very um, detailed in our calculations. Definitely. So maybe, maybe we can try and go back and, and really look at every single every single possibility. Um, so I guess, yeah, no, I think that. So she's still thinking here, Joanne Jin. She's been thinking for some time now. Now she's lower than Goryachkina on time, 55 minutes. Really? Wow. Yeah. So definitely, definitely um, out of preparation at some point. Um, so I think that, I think that's honestly a good sign. Um, it's a good and bad sign when your opponent go like you know deviates from your preparation because you know it's a good sign because it's probably not the best move, but it's a bad sign because you don't know what to do against it. So yeah, uh, you don't you kind of need to choose. So and when you when you play you know your preparation you prepare twenty moves, and on the eighteenth move they play a different move. Are you happy or sad? I'm very sad. <laughs> <laughs> All that time went to waste. <laughs> well, I mean, the problem is the problem is that with some lines, you just know that a move is bad, right? When your opponent plays a move and you know it's not theory and you know that it shouldn't be good because you prepared the first three or four, or the best three or four moves, and you haven't mm -hmm. seen this move and you just know that it shouldn't work, but then you're just yeah. thinking, you're just at the board thinking for 20 minutes, thinking that you're, you know, you're so cool that you know that this move is bad, but you don't know how to proceed. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, it's also, I think yeah. that, that's something as well, but. Yeah, psychologically, you feel like I have to be winning. You're, like, you're looking for the win and you don't see the win. And then you're sitting there for like 45 minutes yeah. after you just put them in your preparation. And then you're the one who's been surprised. So I think this might, have, this might be the case, but I do not blame uh, her for spending mm -hmm. all this time. I think it's, this is the, this is the critical moment of where the time should be spent. Yeah. And I think she's a very good, uh, you know, appropriation of her time to spend all the time here. And I think that, you know, I think that it's going to be very interesting. We, we've tried, I think we, we just, I think about what we can try, you know, be in her shoes and try and, you know, feel like be the chess player and try to like in, in these positions. And, uh, you know, what do you do? You, do you try, you know, like what's your, you know, calculation approach in these in like really complicated positions? my calculation approach well i mean in this position i think that the first thing that you should think about is 
do you want to exchange queens or not? I mean, what pieces do you want to keep in uh, keep on the board? And just, I mean, principally, I mean, what what would you want to what would you want to do here? And then when you answer that question, then then maybe you can dive into the deep calculation that to see what happens then. Um. Oh, she played queen d seven here. Oh, queen d seven. So she played queen d seven here. Wow. So no knight c six or rook c six, which we were. Nothing. Safe, safe. No, so no, no, nothing. Yeah, that's a bit disappointing, but um, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, I can see how sad you are. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, see, I wanted the peace sacrifice, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh -huh. I, I, I can I'm see sure the disappointment the future, in your face. <laughs> we'll get some very, very crazy positions, but just not this game. <laughs> um yeah so uh queen d7 i guess taking the safe route she's up she's here as leaving the match and i think maybe uh the uh the um the logic behind this is that um you know you want she she wants goryachkina to press right to, to make the mistakes and try and make the game complicated right so it's like a very very common thing that in chess and like what you mentioned, I think, was great when you when you're talking about you know the approach to this ca this calculation position, and I think that um, like when you said that you should ask the question, um, what pieces do we want to have the board? I guess Jun Jun's answer to that question was she wants the queens off the board, right? And hmm. because that weakens white position, and I guess maybe her question was, what's my opponent's best piece in this position? And I think if you 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 ask that question, the best piece you know here is probably going to be the queen. Yeah, and you know, they trade the best piece. Uh, you know, use that logic, and you know, you play simple chess. So I think that Jun Jun used you know a very similar approach that you did um, in this position, and this is the move she chose. Not the piece sacrifice, but it's okay. So here, what move did we 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 come up with here? Why didn't we uh, like Queen D seven? I think yeah. it was because we were, we were having some problems with castling. Oh yes, yeah. So we I think were we were looking at pawn takes D five, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, I remember now. So uh, pawn takes d5, and there's no bishop takes f3, which is annoying. What about and bishop? Then, We're um, looking at knight takes d5. What about bishop trying to play bishop c6? Oh, yeah. This Where's is this is also... Awesome. Yeah. So, I guess, but, you know, what, what scares me about this, and white kind of loses the thread, is queen takes d7... And then bishop takes bishop b5 check with tempo. Yeah. And then castling is coming next move. And I feel like, you know, the, the black king in the center might even be, you know, a problem, you know. Yeah. Even, maybe you can go uh, king e6, knight g5, king f5, <laughs> march the king up the board. But I think, I think h5 is... H4 is a big problem. <laughs> and you might get checkmated after bishop d3. I do not recommend you do this at home. <laughs> oh, what about c4? Is then bishop a4 coming to play bishop c2? Oh, yeah? Or bishop d7? That is, oh, yeah, that's also a very annoying. Yeah, or rook h3, like maybe. To. I think there's a lot of unfortunate ways. To lose uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if there is no peace sacrifice, then you want to march with your king, yeah? Mm hmm Yeah. That's that's the approach. Yeah, that's the approach. March the king and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> blind blind faith that uh, your your strongest piece, the king, will take care of itself. Yeah. Well, I'm so. not sure Jun and Jun will do that, but uh, <laughs> but we will see here. I mean is C takes D5 the most critical? Is the most critical move here, do you think, for white? Or for, I think for that, black? I think that it is the most critical because um, D takes C4 might be an option here. Yeah. And then that if you if you take back with any anything on C4, then C takes D4, and the rook is eyeing whatever piece takes back. So tactically, that might be uh a problem right hmm 
So in this position, what did you say after C takes and D5? C takes D5. So the original move that we looked at was uh, Knight takes D5, I think, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. But then Rook C1 was really yeah. problematic here. Precisely. I really, really am struggling to find a good move here. Hmm. Oh, wait. I had a... I, I, actually... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I thought I... I thought I had something, but it didn't work. Well, queen takes b5, maybe. But this bishop, I don't like it on b5, and maybe it's not. No, I, I want to stop their development. I want what the about, development. What about here? Is No, this doesn't work. This doesn't work at all. Yeah. Um, oh, but okay, let's just, I mean, this might be just really, really bad, but what about it? Nah, it just doesn't work. I wanted to play a6 and castle, but a6. you just take on d7 and you just lose mm -hmm. a pawn probably. So. Yeah, I think the pawn. I don't know if you can give up too many pawns. Yeah. Yeah, this is an issue. C takes d5. You have to try and find something here. But I don't I don't know what to play. It was played, C takes d5. Yeah, I think that Drew and Drew and this could this could end badly. What do you think about this queen d7 move? I don't like it. I do not like it. No. I feel like trading the queens, I feel like the queen is gonna be a big piece that's gonna be attacked for tempo. And I think that tempo in a position where the entire your entire advantage in the position is because you have the initiative, right? Yeah. And if you and the queen is a piece that you attack and gain tempo moves that support the initiative, but you know when you kind of trade that piece off and then you know give your opponent uh, more freedom, then your your advantage starts to dwindle down. So I think that maybe Drew and Drew overestimated how easily it would be to, to break down the white center. Um, but I think that this might, this might be a mistake and an opportunity for Gretschkina, uh to, to make a comeback. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not... I, I, I prefer the lines we were looking at before. Um, yeah, Rook C6. I mean, but even... I mean, Knight C6 was very crazy, perhaps. But even Rook C6, simply, you know, keeping the pressure threatening to just castle and just have an active rook on the sixth rank. Mm -hmm. Even even that, I, I think. But, of course, there were many lines to look at, so... Uh... Yeah, there's definitely a lot. Um, sometimes when you, I guess, um, play these really complicated positions where you have a lot of, um, of options, uh, it's kind of... Sometimes you get lost in the calculation. Um, and you just play some move. Yeah, just that's, saying that's that, very easy. That happens yeah. that you're just thinking, oh, okay, these lines look so complicated. Rook c6, knight c6. Let's just, I've been thinking for 30 minutes, let's just go for one line. Let's just trade queens or something. Yeah, I think that's a very, very uh, easy trap to fall into. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm really quite worried in this position. Um, I think it's going to take a lot of... Um, very forcing moves um, to kind of, I, th I think that black should be fine, should be able to equalize some way, but the level of accuracy that it's going to require in this position was not needed. And I think that um, I would honestly, even if the peace sacrifice doesn't work, I would prefer playing the peace sacrifice position mm -hmm. than this position where I have to play a bunch of very accurate moves to, to even have a chance at a drawing. Yeah. Or obviously, I might be over exaggerating how bad the position might be. It's just that you know you need to find some really, really accurate moves um, to to restore the balance. And practically, it's very hard to play this for black. I mean, there no, aren't I, so I agree. there aren't so many moves that 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 black can play. It's very easy for white to gain initiative in in, in a position like this, as you said. So yeah, I think that yeah. I think that the, 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 this bishop b5 tempo is really, really big. I think that yeah. without it, it would be really, really great for, for black, but, you know, 
with it, everything changes. And even, I mean, if, if Black could play Rook B1 somehow, or Rook B8, sorry, somehow, that could also, mm -hmm. have, that would also have been quite, quite nice. But Bishop takes D5 was played. Okay, Bishop takes D5. So, yeah, yeah realizing that um, Rook C1 is very strong. But even, even Rook C1 here uh, seems like a plausible plan. But bishop c, your idea, bishop c6 actually, you know, comes into play here. I mean, at least it's it's allowing black to proceed the development. But, mm -hmm. um, hmm. yeah. So maybe, maybe uh, queen takes d7 and bishop b5 should be played. Do you think that we should go, you know, for the immediate? Maybe the immediate uh, bishop b5, or maybe do you think that um, you can try and delay uh, this trade with maybe a developing move? We could start with the forcing line. Uh, queen takes okay. d7 and bishop b5, as this is basically forced if, if white wants to trade queens here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, because now the question is, where's the king going? So yeah, before we were looking at this king e6 and this marching up to f5. Um, yeah, I recommend that. <laughs> but let's see if, if black would play something else. For instance, I don't know, is knight c6 an option or is that just pinning everything? I think knight c6, you might just take the pawn. On c5, yeah? Mm -hmm. hmm. And then, I mean, the king is just doesn't feel so safe. Yeah, the king feels like a target in this position, honestly. Yeah. I was just afraid that if bishop c6... Oh, okay, can you... <laughs> yeah, I was just afraid that the king on... Because if you take with a piece, I was afraid of d5 after bishop takes c6. Um, oh, yeah. And if you mm -hmm. take with the king, I'm not sure... I don't know if rook c1 or something could be played. Or... Yeah. Something like that. I, mm -hmm. I think that maybe um, you should keep the bishop on b5. Um, on and d5? just cast your king. And try and um, take advantage of the, the king on d7. Yeah. And you have two pawns, right? So it's going to be very hard for, for, for black to take both of them. Um, so that's obviously, you're up two pawns. You know, you also, let's just take into account that black is a pawn down here. Sorry, what, sorry, queen... Um, Black is a pawn down in this position. Just to mm -hmm. remember that as well. Yeah, that's something we should remember throughout. Your pawn down. That, and that pawn needs to be... Uh, you got to get that pawn back. Obviously, there's compensation, but... Um, but is there compensation here for Black being pawn down, you think? Uh, I think there's compensation, but the question of whether uh, it'll be enough compensation is still undecided. It depends on you know if the initiative can is is is, is you know if, if white can consolidate right, but bishop b five the king really struggles to find a square. Yeah, that's the and problem. If you play right? bishop c six or knight c six, that is trade, and let's say bishop c six, bishop yeah. c bishop takes c six, knight takes c six, you take the pawn, rook takes c six, you can just take the pawn, castle next move, you're just up a pawn. And, you know, what, what can black do? It's just a pawn. Yeah. And also, I'm just wondering here, after knight takes c6, is d5 dangerous for, for black? d5? Oh, but then oh, knight yeah. before, yeah? Yeah, knight before. Um, it, I think it's getting a little double-edged. Yeah. I think it's better to maybe just take the pawn on c5, yeah. right? And avoid avoid the, the complications. Hmm. Definitely, and then just castle and just keep this king unsafe and yeah, for sure. Force it to have or yeah, hoping that he's going going to lose or that black is going to lose many moves by trying to to uh, consolidate the king. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I think that uh, Jun Jun has made like, maybe this is the, her biggest mistake of the match. Uh, to be honest, um, you know, I really do not know what went wrong. Um, uh, maybe we're missing something, but from, from what we're seeing, you know, it was, it was, it was a mistake. 
She took on D7, Gorya Chikina, and king takes D7. Okay. So this is the actual position. Yeah, I think bishop B5 is, is very natural. There's no reason to play anything else. No. Um, no, I, I think I'd be very, very uh, happy with my position where I was white here. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's just a you know calculation error by Ju and Jun, really, really opening things up in this match. Yeah. Yeah, this queen, uh, D, this queen D7 was, um, yeah, it was the move that we liked the least out of the three, yeah? When we were analyzing before. Yeah, I'm, I might even prefer king F8 to queen D7, to be honest. I think that, uh, and I think queen D7 is, is worse than king D, king F8 from a practical point of view, because you need the queen on the board to, to fuel the initiative. You need a, a very strong piece. To attack. Yeah. So without it, I, I honestly think King F8. I, I would prefer to play King F8 than this. Maybe that's a bit extreme, but you know, it's going to be a long, long game of defense for Drew and June to to fight. But it's going to be down a pawn, and I think that Gorge you know, has amazing chances here to just to convert. Yeah, and to to get back to equalize the match, basically. To get back into it. Yeah, and I think this is a big game too because they played played four games, right? Yeah, this is the fifth round. And after six games, they go back to Russia. Yeah. So I think that if uh, ending this game, and you know, we'll see how the game goes tomorrow. But I think that starting off uh, having a win here and then going back to Russia would be you know, a a good way to 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 set to settle the uh, I guess set the stage for the, the entire the rest of the match and. Yeah. Um, I think this is this will be a very very important win that I that um, you know, she, she might have to get. But another thing, I think a, a little trick, Bishop yeah. C6. Um, knight, Bishop takes C6. Um, you have, sorry, you have. Rook takes C6. Here, what do you think? Uh. Why could play here? You kind of have a, have, a, have a choice here, and there might be there might be a problem because um, if you play castles, uh, c4, and if this knight can blockade on um, the d5 square, then black could even start to have an advantage. Can I just say something? I thought this was really funny, but someone in the chat said that Nigel Short had king f8 as his favorite move. In the other in the, in the other position we were looking at, uh, okay. Seven. So I'm well, not sure if you know if he actually said this, but if he said it, it's it's quite funny that he had King of Eight as as his favorite move. Yeah, I think that um that was definitely a joke. Yeah, I doubt that. Yeah, Major Short is is a very very strong chess player. Yeah, but King F8 would be my third choice after Queen D7. Yeah. Is ugly of a move it is. Queen d7 just I just don't like it. It's just not <laughs> not it's just it doesn't like it just it's just not um I guess grasping the position, I guess. Yeah. Um if that's if that makes sense. I mean, that's that's not um a move that uh you know trading those queens is not helpful to the black position because you wanna, you know, gain the initiative. Yeah. So yeah, I think if the rook, but but here's the thing. Let's say they play rook takes c6, right? Yeah. So this is the then, line that we're looking at. This looks c4 here yeah, after rook, castle, yeah. Rook takes c6 is castles, c4. I'm a bit worried here. Because knight d2. I think, I think he be, white can place a knight on c5 somehow. Yes, that's yeah, that's what I, my idea. Will, but like you know, the really funny thing is that after uh, knight d2, yeah. you have king e6, knight e4, king d5, and this king is like a is the the best piece on the board. It's a monster. The monster king. It's a, so I think that if the knight tries to to wiggle around and, and maneuver. What about f3 the, here, Hans? Oh, the e5 pawn is hanging after. Never mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted to play Rook D1 and then I was asking the king where yes. we were supposed to go, but obviously... Tagmon, Tagmon in the chat says King of the Hill. So maybe, do you think they should have a, a world championship of King of the Hill? You know, maybe they can... Maybe one game the of King one. of the Hill, yeah. one game of Crazy House, Bug House. Yeah. Maybe that would be... Maybe that's what we'll see in the very near future. At least if you start organizing things, Hans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't need Fisher Random. We need King of the Hill. Yeah. That's the real variant of, you know. <laughs> that's what everyone just everyone just wants to see King of the Hill. No one cares about any other type of chess. No, so, no, no, no. So I think you should no. make it popular, Hans. In your games, yeah. you should start running with your king and then just name it. Name it. King of the Hill, and then after that, maybe, maybe you will start a trend. Oh yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I'm gonna name it Hans of the Hill. Or, Hans of the that Hill. That doesn't work. Hans okay, of the Hill. You're taking like King with Hans. Maybe if my, my name was like, what what name ends with a K that could make it like Fisher Random sounds natural, but I don't know like Hans King of the Hill or Hans of the Hill or King of the Hans. I think it's just not going to work out, but, you know, I'll try and find a different name to, different, different game to name after myself. <laughs> Hans, have you seen the live position? Oh, uh, what happened? No. Did <laughs> King it happen? G6 was played allowing knight g5. In what position? After bishop b5 check, king e6 was played. Oh, and no. Oh, no. Allowing knight g5. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. So this, this running with the king, this is exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> they listened. They, they're, they're listening somehow. It's like, oh my, no way. So no peace sacrifice, but instead a king on you can see the You can see the excitement on my face. This is like a... <laughs> Oh, I see. I see all these. No, come on. What? What is she doing? Oh, this What's is like tilt. Here? This is full tilt. <laughs> oh wait, she might actually. Oh no. Wait, does that? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think I understand. Do you want to talk us through your thoughts right now, Hans? <laughs> I, I am very, very confused. So my, my thoughts are that this is absolutely crazy. And this is just not going to work. And that she's going to be resigning in like five more moves. But maybe, maybe by some miracle, that won't be true. I mean, she played this relatively quickly as well in some... No, but I, I think that this is like... She might be thinking it's King of the Hill, honestly, and I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> you know, it's a very easy thing to confuse. You know, maybe she, last night, she was on chess.com, and, you know, she was playing some King of the Hill, preparing for her World Championship match, and she sat down and, and thought that it was King of the Hill, and now, you know, wants to run up the King, you know. Such mistakes happen all the time. I just, where's, can we just look at this 95 check? Yeah, that's what looks more not most Okay, but then, then H4, H4. And, H4. and I'm, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand either. Because now there are, there are, there is this Bishop D3. <laughs> Bishop D3, mate. No, it's not mate, but I mean, it's the king going to F4. It will be mate, yeah? And, but there's also this bishop d7 check, which is... Bishop d7, bishop exchange. d3, everything is threatened. No. So how are you no, supposed I, to... I don't, I don't understand. Know. I need some... I'm going to put some emotes in the chat. Let me find a good emote to... Oh my, geez, the schnapps. I mean, I mean, this white squared bishop of white, it's just, it has too many squares to go to. I'm going to use the... Magnus, what emote? I'm I'm very confused. Does does white but does black want to play bishop takes g two? But then, no, that would be that's that's as good as resigning. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering. Oh, that's forced mate, or not forced, but rook g one. Let's say bishop g five, bishop d three, king f four, knight h three, 
So can you just go through this again? Rook G1, Bishop, where did you want to put it? Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. I'm not sure. Let's put it on C6 or something to avoid Bishop D7. And Bishop D3, check. Yeah. King F4, Knight H3, King F3, Rook G3, puzzle rush. Chess.com, put that in your... Uh, I have... Oh, put that in the uh, puzzle battle world championships tomorrow that I'll be competing against. Jimis, 98. I should say his real name is... I'm not sure. Jimis something yeah. but i'll be playing puzzle battle tomorrow so this is a little precursor yeah i think you should also tell us a little bit about your your puzzle rush because you're playing mm -hmm. now the championship yeah, so, uh, tomorrow or actually today um i'm playing in the puzzle battle world championships the semifinals against uh jimis Dim no, dimitrios lalapoulos and um, uh, it's going to be a very interesting event. I should be sleeping right now, but I chose to do commentary because I knew that this game would feature King Walk. Um, so that's why I chose to, to do this feeling. instead of sleeping. Yeah. So yeah, that, you tune in tomorrow. I think it's, yeah, Chess just linked the article, but um, I think it's 12.30 Eastern time, I think. Um, but yeah, definitely you should, you guys should watch that. It's going to be very interesting. And, uh, you know, you'll see some very interesting puzzles and some very high level. Uh, and also, I'm going to get crushed. So if you like, uh, I'm going to get crushed. So, you know, you'll, you'll get to see that. But then you will be back again for the round tomorrow as well, right? Yes. Yes. For round number so six, the, the last school. one in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. It's going to be I'm very excited. Last one. And then we're after Russia. Russia is going to be a big turning point, I think. I think that's going to be where the. I think that's where things might be. That's a, I think that's going to be a turning point in the match. Where the, things who can change. Can find, yeah. Because, Anna, would you rather play in chess in Antarctica or, or Sweden? Or, like, in your. It's like. I think that. Yeah. But don't you think there's some pressure as well from playing in your home country? Yeah, that is actually a very good point. H1 so like, was played, by the way. Yeah. We're, we're pretending to be like psychologists here, like <laughs> analyzing all of them. I think that's good. We can try our best and then see yeah, if we're right. I, I took it. a psychology course. You're taking I know, it? Uh, I took one last year, so I'm, some people call me a psychologist, you know. Yeah. But I think that uh, it's good to analyze the players and think of other factors that, be, that could uh, affect them other than the actual chess. Because it's, it's important. There's a lot of other things that go on other than just the actual game of chess. No, of course. Of course. There are two humans mm. playing behind the board. Of course. Or if you're a Bobby Fischer fan, Bobby Fischer, he actually said sometimes he believed in psychology, sometimes he didn't believe in psychology. He was a bit inconsistent. But his, 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 at the end of his life, he said that psychology and chess never matters. That's a good question for chat. What percentage of should two questions? What percentage of chess is psychology, and is it important? Or if so, if not, is it important at all? Like, is psychology just something that you make up to, to you know, just justify things? Yeah, and that's a very good question for the chat. So we can see here what you think about it if you just write it in the yeah. chat. What well, your definitely, yeah. Zero point three percent. Someone said. <laughs> yeah. 0.3%. Interesting. I think you and Fisher would agree. <laughs> well, this position, Hans, I did not expect this position at all when we actually put it up Me before. Knew. This is the actual position we analyzed before. Yeah. And I remember, remember finishing it saying that, you know, ironically, this is probably not what's going to happen. But when I said that, I was not meaning probably. I was just thinking this is surely not what not what's going to happen, but uh, perhaps it is. I think. <laughs> you I mean, it was. It. it was. This is the position, of course. So. I think you jinxed it. I think that Joan June's gonna watch the stream. And she's gonna blame you, and she's gonna say, you know, Anna's the reason she she jinxed it. You know, so. Because she heard me saying this and wanted Maybe, to. Maybe who knows? But I think that you know. It's just, just all your fault, you know, some, to some, you know, you, you jinxed it. 
Thank you, Hans. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's always oh, my pleasure. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this happened. H four. I mean. I mean, I just yeah. How I, have is, no, how I have is, no idea what to say. Yeah. What? How is Black stopping this? Let's. Should we try to find the move, Hans? Should we do that? Just, <laughs> what? What can even be played like? But is this the point where she's resigning? She had to see this H four move when she went into this. Okay. 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 Actually, we, we may have missed something tiny. <laughs> oh, I see something very nice. So this is a puzzle rush. King g6. Let's say the king can hide on, 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 on h6. Let's just tuck the king away, hide, and try and, you know, stay safe, right? Yeah, of course, that's what black wants to right now, just to stay, stay safe and not get checkmated. Oof, all these, all these sacrifices are just, like, here, and I want to play all them. They're like, so let's say king h6. What to play now? Wait, what, what did you play as white after king g6? Bishop d3 check. Okay, bishop d3 check, yeah. King h6. And then, how about g4? Yeah. Oh no, I blundered my rook. Is that a problem? It's the, it's the, it's the fake out. Oh yeah, because you wanted to have the h4 pawn protected. Yeah. I suppose. But I think that... There's some threats here. Huh. Wow. Well, Jun Jun might have found like this magical resource, but I, I unfortunately just don't believe in it. I mean, what but happens maybe... if simply... Wow, if this works, then I'm going to be, then I'm, uh, I'm never, actually just bishop e4, simple, simple, just bishop e4. You have to, Sagbon says you have to believe, but unfortunately I don't believe. Um, Hans, mm -hmm. Jim played C takes d4. Bishop d7 was played, king oh, okay. takes d5. Okay, she's going for this, you're, you're, you're down in exchange. Oh, so I guess she decides the down exchange is the easiest one to defend. Okay. But is she then admitting that she did something wrong? No, I think, yeah, this is a, absolutely, absolutely. She's saying, okay, I made a mistake. Now I'm going to try and defend. Do you just want to look very quickly at this King G6? Because I thought it was very nice, this idea. Yes, I, I, I agree. We should look at this. <laughs> Let's just look at it. Because it looks very crazy, but it looks very nice. King g6. Is there any way Bishop to D. play something else here? All right, bishop d3. King h6. King. Or even king h5, like, like a baller. <laughs> it's just, I honestly find it funny at this point. Like. <laughs> Yeah, so someone is so asking if king g6 was played. This was not played. C takes d4 was played instead, but we're just looking at this position. King h5, this could be it. This could be the magic that was... <laughs> <laughs> it's just... How are you... I honestly think this is the best option. Have you ever seen something like this? In a no, world championship haven't. match? <laughs> this is almost as good as that peace sacrifice. King h5... Like, let's just like let's just explain the path of the king. D seven, e six, f five, g six, h five, <laughs> all in a row. It's like a, it's a march. F three here. Someone is asking, preparing g four. Wait, sorry. I think you can just take the pawn. On f three. On d four. Oh, you want to just simply and then let's just take look at this g four check. King h six. The king's safe. The king is as safe as it will be on h5. It's a very safe square. This is incredible. 
Wow. <clears throat> Absolutely amazing. This is much better than looking at the, the Petrov game where they traded off all the pieces. <laughs> I think I think this is insane, but it seems to be insanely good because it seems to work. So uh, Yeah. I think that this may be about a might have been a missed opportunity. What about knight h3 here? Someone is suggesting to play g5 and knight f4. Then I think you can just take the pawn. On f3? Yeah. The king, you know, the king might look, you know, not safe, but I think it's the safest piece on the chessboard. I think it's the, the king is active. It's I think the king could I think black could even start to execute a, a very strong counterattack here. Even after knight h3, you can play g6 and the king runs back to, to g7. Yeah, in worst case, yeah. I could see this position like Gorachkina going for this and then realizing, oh wait, the king is on h6, but I have absolutely nothing. Very interesting this idea. Perhaps this was Yeah, no, I think King G6. <laughs> wow. I think this, this was the move. This is I think this was a missed right opportunity. Hmm. So maybe she was right all along. All along we were criticizing her, but the entire time. Her queen d7. King d6, king h5. You know this, if this would have happened with the king h6 and or king h5 or whatever, then you would have been even more interesting than the peace sacrifice because we weren't expecting it at first with queen d7. So it would have yeah. been sort of like tricking us into, into such a crazy position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. But yeah. <clears throat> This is the position here, so castle was played. So, you just think, oh, at five, and you're just like, oh, wait. It's like breaking gravity, but in chess. Like, it's just, just it doesn't, it doesn't add up. So, okay, so I guess we can go to the, we can go back to the, the main position now. Yeah, this is the position right now after castle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this, yeah, the pawn on d4 is a strong though. And the knight's going to come down. Not so simple. And I couldn't see, obviously it's impossible for Jumanjun to win this position, but, it, but it's hard to win. I think this honestly might be more of a draw than a win. For, for Goryachkina, you mean? Just because of how this this knight is not really that great, even here. Let's say h6 is played, and you know you play rookie one check, king d6, knight e4. Wait, sorry, one second. Knight takes e4. Rook takes e4. Now it's Black's mm -hmm. turn. I think the we're king. having connection problems here. <clears throat> Okay. I think we're having some connection problems. Just one second. <clears throat> Hans? You can hear me, right? Yeah, is it is Hello? it uh, is me? it lagging a bit for you too? Yeah, I have the stream open and it's it's back up now, but I can see the board perfectly fine. So yeah. it might be um we might be having some internet issues. Yeah. All right. Should we maybe take a five minute break to fix the stream? <clears throat> But my camera on the stream is a bit. Yeah. Yes. Five minute break. We'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back after five minutes. We're going to try to fix the stream just so that it's no. not lagging. And um, yeah, we'll be back very, very soon. Thank you. Yes.
so we are back now and hopefully um, the stream will be a bit better now. There won't be so many internet problems. Um, but yeah, we're back now. And Hans, what has been happening here since we last left? Should we go back a few moves just to see what's been uh, happening in the game? Yes, I think we should uh, go through the past few moves. So uh, we saw Ju and Jun when I uh, really long king hike, but did not finish it off with a longer king hike, and that might have uh, cost her the game, as she chose to go for an exchange sacrifice, yeah. uh, where she gets a pawn and a knight for the pawn and a bishop for the exchange. So um, yeah, definitely some very uh, risky play from Ju and Jun. Yeah, king d6 was played and rookie one here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and yeah, someone was yeah. asking why you, why white couldn't take the h7 pawn, but after f6, the knight should be trapped. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, the knight is trapped oh. there, yeah. and uh, you if you lose the knight, then I think uh, black has black has a very good position there. Yeah. So rookie one was so, there. Yeah. So king d6. I think the idea of king d6. Um, and the point is that if you play h6 immediately after rookie one, king d6, knight e4, bishop takes e4, rook takes e4, you play knight c6. But I think Ju and Jun found a way to get a better position in the same position by playing the move king to d6 first. Yeah. And now I think that what, what her idea was is that after Ricky one, let's say, she can throw on the move knight c6 first. So if we play knight e4, you can play rook, bishop takes e4, rook takes e4, and you have the exact same position, but up a tempo, because you've not played h6. Yeah. So I think this is the uh, the nuance that Ju and Jun wanted to, to play. Yeah, and h6 is you, not a necessary move either here, of course. Yeah. It's not, not a move you're taking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, and that's the idea of King D six, kind of leaving the option open um, for 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 White and maintaining some uh, flexibility of what what she's going to play. Yeah, so I think definitely giving posing some very in, important questions here, and I, you know, the more I look at this, the more I think this is just going to be a draw. I'm not sure how White's going to break through once and I. It's this d7. The first idea that comes to mind is rook to b1. But then I think that you can play h6 and kick this knight out. What do you want black to play first, though? It's black's move now. It's black to move. After king, after king d6, right? No, after rookie one. Oh, rookie one was played. I think then then you should just play uh, knight c6. Um, knight c6. I think just knight c6. Yeah. And if... Knight e4, you just take it and go king d5. And the knight's coming to e5. The pawn on d3 is very, very strong, and I, I think that block should be okay there. Hmm. Very centralized pieces. Yeah, very, very centralized pieces. So, yeah, it's tough to find an idea. So... It's definitely going to be hard here for, for. well, I think it's a simple move. I think knight c6 should be played, but I guess rook c2 is being considered. <coughs> you actually might want to activate the rook first. I think this is actually a very good idea. You activate the rook first, then when you play knight c6, the rook isn't behind the knight, so the rook can be active. Yeah. So the rook and the knight will coordinate very well with this active king, you know, maybe by some miracle. Block will have the advantage. I highly doubt that, but hmm. it's just the big question is where's White's play going to come from, right? Hmm. And can White prove that the rook, the extra rook for the knight, is the knight's actually not a worse piece? Because in this play, in this position, the, the rooks, if they're not coordinating, they're not going to be. You, know, you have to prove the worth of the piece. And if you can't do that, then it's you know, then the the knights should be okay. Yeah. This bishop on d5 looks quite strong right now. Um, 
seems to be very strong, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think the bishop on d5 is the strongest piece. And so when I see, yeah, I think a move was played. Rook c2 was played. Okay, played great. Rook c2 was played. Yeah. So rook c2, activating the rook, and you know, I think that uh, I guess there's lost the touch a bit. Yes, Grechkina. I just don't see the the, the follow up, unfortunately. It's just that the, the pieces don't coordinate well enough. And it's really, really hard to find a way to really play. The, I'm honestly getting worried. Like, obviously not, not going to lose the game. But, you know, the compensation is – those are really – you know, I'm getting – even after, like, let's say, 94, you don't even have to take this knight. Just go king d7. You know, Anna, maybe we can see Joe and pull off a comeback and win this game. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think do you think there's any chance she wins this position? Yeah, I'm not sure when, but I think she can pressure she could pressure Goryachkina in this position. Yeah, no, it's actually very interesting how you know it's, it's actually surprisingly hard to play. Like let's say Rook D1 happens, right? Yeah. And knight c6. What does white do? I, I, I don't see... I don't see where the counterplay is going to come from. I really... Um, I'm struggling to see, like, an active idea for white. And if there's no active ideas, then, then what are you going to do? I'm sure there's some way to equalize, but... Like, it could, you could go down a path of where you're, you're overpressing, and then you just realize that the position is really bad. Can you take an <laughs> so, h7 now, Hans? In this position? Sorry? Can you take on h7 or is it way too dangerous? Um, after rook c2? No, after, after knight c6, but I'm thinking, yeah, the, the, hmm. I was just wondering if you could take on h7 here, but, but it's probably just, there's probably not, not any time for that. I think that maybe even after, um, after rook d1, knight c6, Yes, after rook d1, knight c6, take on take on h7. But I think it's uh, it's too dangerous. Maybe it's dangerous. maybe you don't even need to bother about chopping this knight. Just go rook takes a2 and push the a pawn. Yeah, yeah. The problem here is the a pawn as well, of course, from for white. Yeah, the a pawn is a lot is, is a lot better than the h pawn. Yeah. So um, you know, this could be bishop b3 is an idea. With this knight sideline, the the d pawn could be a big threat. But uh, I I don't I think this is just equality here. I think it's pure equality. And after rook takes a two, I might even just I think I'd choose black here to be honest. But you know I think this is this has been very nice how Joe and Jim played all this king a six and everything. Perhaps she even she did because now we're seeing that the position of black is not that bad. So when she played this whole king a six king a five idea sacrificing the exchange. I mean, she did get some play, and I think we overlooked no, it when we were analyzing. No, I, yeah. I think it's absolutely genius. Like, the the evaluation, the, the series of evaluations that she made in her calculation was just absolutely genius. Like, it's just really, she, she's bringing, like, you know, we doubt her at first for these moves, and obviously there's some certain ways, but, but like, the, the, the evaluation of, like, of all these lines, just like at every single point, like King F5, to be able to say, okay, when I play King F5, and to even realize that when you sacrifice the exchange, the position is okay. Like that level of evaluation in, in like, in, in thinking ahead is, is really, really impressive. Yeah. Um, I think that really shows why she's the world champion because it's just outclassing your opponents in, 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 in calculation and evaluation. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's very impressive, and uh, we really did overlook it before. So, um, no, I think she impressive. just evaluated everything perfectly. Perhaps I mean she probably sold this when she played Queen D Seven. To be honest. Uh yeah. Well, the thing is, there's the only mistake was that I think that um, like the way that she uh, I think it was better than sacrificing the exchange. I think that was maybe a slight mistake. I think sacrificing the exchange was not the best. I think, I think the king g6, king h5 idea was you could keep the tension and not 
stop fighting. <clears throat> but I think she made the, the 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 sacrifice to just say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna sacrifice the exchange and try and outplay my opponent from there. Yeah. And as we can see now, I mean, the position is <coughs> not not bad at all for Black, right? No, not, not at all, not at all. I've seen a very very big. I guess turnaround, but this Rook C2 idea is just really strong. Um, I'm wondering if there is some some improvement somewhere where, where things could have changed. You know what? I think it might have been. The move might have actually been King D2. If you can go all the way back. To, Do you want to uh, go all the way back? Bishop, all the way back to Bishop takes E8, Rook takes E8. Um... I think King D2 was the move, honestly. So we can see that now uh, a3 was played here to protect the a pawn in this position. Okay. But, but yeah. The rook is still active. I think maybe if we go all the way back. Yeah. Maybe what Ju and Ju and Goryach King to miss was the move King D2. In which which move was that? After rook takes C8. Uh, fortunately, I can't see your screen, but after rook takes C8. Sorry. So a lot, a lot later. Yeah. Going back. A decent, like five moves about here. Where where do you want to? Oh, after you rook takes back. c8. All right. So oh, rook instead of d2. castle, king d2. I think just king d2. I don't see what's wrong. I think this is what they they both overlooked this move hmm. because the king on d2 is, is is stopping the pawn on d is d d2 right d4. Hmm. It's actively fighting against that. <laughs> and Rook C2 is stopped. So I think King D2 is really surprised. Yeah. D2, and I think, you know, there is, there's some, I think obviously there's a lot of mistakes, there's some mistakes in calculation that joins you, but it's not, it's not easy for us to say, right? We're sitting here, you know, relaxed, of course. moving the pieces, calcul calculating, so we can't, there's no way to compare, you know, it's very, very hard to do what she's doing and perfectly, right? So... No, she's, she's doing an amazing job. I mean, of course, both of them are doing an amazing job, but this idea that you and Jude had was was very nice and something yeah. that was very easy to overlook. And even even we, when we were when, when we were able to move all the pieces, you know, it should be a bit easier to to analyze when you're moving pieces, but but still we, we did not understand how fine this was for black. Um, mm, yeah. So, so definitely a very nice game here. Yeah. So, um, so a three, um, I think, I, I think that after a three, you need to try and find a way to limit, you know, black white's pieces. But this, this H pawn is kind of annoying that it's hanging, right? Anna, maybe Anna, maybe we can sacrifice the pawn with with f five. You know, uh, just one second. You know the position where you said king d two. Yeah. The g two pawn is hanging. Yeah, but you have a rookie one check. Yeah. King d six. And then you have knight takes f seven check. Yeah. So. Is that a just question in chat? Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a question in chat. So just so that um, we could look at this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, of course, so, if there are any tactics that we miss at any point, you can always tell us in the chat and suggest different moves. It's always very nice to to be able to look at, at those moves as well because it's easy for us to miss things. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but let's go here to the position. So what were you saying? Do you want to sacrifice the A3 pawn? Um, no, I think... That um after a rook c two a three um sorry rook c two rook e one king d six a three um I'd like to play the move f five to stop the knight from coming to e four and forcing the trade of um the trade but. The idea, I think maybe that takes h7 needs to be calculated. Yeah. But I think that pawn, this d pawn, is really strong. Uh, I think that d3 followed by 
D2. And, you know, it's going to, White could get in a lot of trouble really quickly, actually. You might, might, might honestly might be surprised by what, by what, 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 what could happen. And the knight is a bit offside, but I'm not sure. After rook d1, is there. Is it not possible to block it? Rook d1, yeah, but the knight c6, right? All right, let's go back to the game because I think several moves have been played. Mm -hmm. So a3, h6. Oh, I don't, I don't like that. I don't think that's necessary. Yeah, someone even said it in the chat. They asked if h6 was necessary, so. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I think that I think that you could have just played knight c6 immediately. Knight e4 was played here, and um, was there a trade? Traded. Oh, but I think you can just go king d7. You can trade that that knight at any point. Why why rush the trade? The bishop is currently a very strong piece right now. I think that trading might have been a mistake. Because you, you want, I think you want to keep the tension with this bishop. With this bishop having control, you're keeping the tension. The bishop controls a lot of key squares too. So I think that actually might, might, have, been, might, have, might have been a mistake. And also a move that's coming up is f5. And this knight might be pushed to, to g3. And on g3, it doesn't really have, it's kind of out of squares. You can go to e2, but then might be pushed with d3. So I think that um, keeping the bishop on might have been uh, better. And you play king d7 here instead. Yeah. Yeah, I think that this that might have been a, I think that's a mistake. I, I believe it's a mistake because I think the bishop is just better than the knight, honestly. And having the two the two pieces being coordinating together against the three uncoordinated and un, not that that active pieces is much better. To have the two pieces, the three pieces working together, just two pieces working together. I think that's just a general thing that you know not treating that bishop was was a mistake. Hmm. But there there also is the the reasoning, or well, maybe there's a really concrete reason for why treating the bishop is, is correct. So maybe we should try and look for like a concrete reason why to justify you know her move. Rook takes so, d4 and knight c6. Yeah, so I guess you're gonna have to start to calculate here. Yeah, of course. Of course this maybe how how do you think do you have any maybe we need we need to kind of think of something to uh, activate our rooks, right? That's the main goal. Yeah. How do you, how do you, what, what, what moves do you think we could play to do that? Maybe rook e8? Yeah, the problem is that the d8 square is, is protected here. Mm -hmm. I'm just scared of this, might... this d pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, um, the king on d5 maybe come to c4 definitely a very active king that should be you know, it's very worrying i mean what about honestly. if we just simply play if we go back to to e1 yeah with with yeah but here's the thing in this position if the king was on d2 and the rook was on c8 then everything would be fine because the rook wouldn't be active but you know this kind of goes back to the other position where king d2 was in castling instead of king d2 was the the, the beginning of of where Jew and Jew started to, to really equalize in this position. So I think that's like the that's that's the first the first mistake that was made. Um, yeah. So Anna, do you think that White will you know try and will, will have enough counterplay, or do you think that maybe uh, Jew and Jun should be able to have have enough counterplay of their own? Yeah. I mean, so, looking at at this, I think that no, it's just it feels so hard for white to stop this pawn if the if the black knight gets into gets into play here. I mean, for instance, 
I mean, the, the black knight just has so many squares, he can go to a5, b3, to c4, to e5, c4. It can go, it can go to so many places, and these rooks seem to be kind of stuck in the first rank. They don't really seem mm. to have any... But perhaps when the knight moves, then... I'm not sure if white could play something like rook e8, but then king d7. Um, that's just what I'm looking at, but... Um, yeah, I think there's definitely, um, might be a bit of a waiting game. And I think that maybe a move like King F1 is going to be strong and just play Rook E2 and, and just get this Rook off the seventh rank. You know, it's a, you're taught when you're a kid that the Rook on the seventh rank is the is, is one of the most powerful pieces. And that's because all the pawns are regular, are most of the time on the seventh rank. Yeah. So it's attacking a lot of pieces. So I think King F1, maybe realizing, okay, Made a pass mistake. I need the rook to be on. I need the rook to cut off and stop my opponent's counterplay. I think that approach needs to be taken, to be honest. So maybe I think rook e8 and going for this counterplay might not be the right idea. Maybe going for, you know, just limiting the opponent's counterplay might, might be the right idea yep. in this position. Yeah. But even here, I think that. Um, I think that the, the big mistake here that uh, really turned the tables, it kind of really kind of shows how um, you know complicated this game is, is that one mistake playing castles instead of king d2 kind of changed everything. And then now Ju and June has been able to really solidify the position. Should so, white go for an exchange of rooks? That's normally what um, white wants to do when when there is when they when they're an exchange up, yeah? Yeah, generally that's the rule. It kind of depends on the rook that you have left. Yeah. You know, if you trade your inactive rook and have an active rook, that is. Yeah. But if you trade a an inactive rook and your opponent's just just you know crushing you and you have no activity, then you might not want to trade that rook. Hmm. So, you know, you think you might have to. I think that some 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 measures are going to be have to be taken to control the counterplay first and then try and push back. I think that that is, that is probably going to be the best approach in this position. So I think we should be getting a lot of moves soon um, since they're getting a bit low on time, right? Yeah, a few moves have been... Oh, no, yeah. So this is the position here after knight c6. But yeah, they're moved. Well, yeah, they're moved twenty-eight, so they still they only have twelve moves left before the time control. Okay. Yeah. So I guess Jo and June is on the shorter side, but I don't think that time will be a problem. Her moves are very natural. I don't think that she'll have to make any big like decisions or have to calculate too many long lines. It's a pretty natural position to play. Yeah. H5 was played. Oh, yeah. H5? Oh, yeah. here we go. This is the, this is just very, very, so yeah, it's just like a back and forth battle. Wow, this is going to require some calculation for sure. Yeah, definitely, because now is the idea to play, to, to put some pressure on the G7 pawn. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a bit worried about this idea. I think that it might might be taking on some some risk, and not the good kind of risk. I don't think there's a good kind of risk. But let's say, for example, like well, she's King creating D5, some right? counterplay for move. herself. Mm -mm. Sorry. Yeah, she's she's creating some counterplay for herself with this h five. Yeah, but, but let's say you go rig g four. I push d3. So it's it's black's turn now. Yeah, you, I think king d5 is good. Yeah. Activating the king. Rook g4. And maybe if rook takes g7, it's immediately losing to d2. Yeah, yeah That's of an course. immediate loss. But I was thinking if rook d1, if that's possible after d3. I think that if rook uh, d1, you go d2 again. King h2. King h2, then I think Simply you go knight d4. Yeah. 
in your yun and bed. <clears throat> I think what might be better is um, if king f1, the knight d4. In what position do you want to play king f1 after d3? After rook, after d2. Oh, so after rook d1, d2, king f1. Yeah. Or even after rook d1, you could play knight e5. A lot of ideas here. And I'm not sure this g7 pawn is going to be that important in the grand scheme of things. I think that Goryachkina needs to make sure that when she's calculating this, she's absolutely sure because if she misses one move, it could be over. But you know, how about if simply white tries to get these pawns and, you know, stop this pawn and simply just give back the exchange or even just get one pawn back and just stop this d2 pawn? Because I mean, then yeah. the pawning games should be winning for white. Yeah, but I think that it's, it's hard to it's hard to make that happen. I think it's very hard to make that happen. The D pawn is it's it's, it's not gonna it's not it's hard it's a hard pawn to trade. Um, it's just a very it's an advanced pawn. It's a very strong pawn, and to trade it, I'm not sure how you might be able to do that. Um, you know, you can obviously create counterplay with moves like rook takes g7, but after like d2, rook d1. So here. Knight d4, you might even like be losing now. So in what position do you want to take on g7? Uh, after d3. King d5, rook g4, and let's play d3 there. And now you want to take on h7? Yeah, Rick takes g7, loses. Yeah, I was thinking, though, in the position that we we're looking at before, so uh, with the king on f1, if black, what do you want black to play here? I mean, um, if, for instance, if the king, knight moves knight somewhere, I was there. thinking of then taking. Knight, knight d4, for sure. Knight d4, all right. Let's look at this. Yeah, I think it might be it might, might be lost there. Yeah, I think it's you're lost. probably right. I think white black from Percy <clears throat> one's coming. Yeah, coming with a lot of force. Yes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So this is lost. Um Wow. Wow. G six was played here. In this position after h5. Well, um, that's not needed. That is not needed. That is not. Well, why play just king d5? Like, uh, maybe, I think she might, maybe it's a miscalculation, but g6, you're, you're creating your own weaknesses. 